Questions arise after a woman who was shot and killed by her husband was denied an emergency protective order. Experts weighing in on domestic violence concerns after the murder of Talena Henderson. Georgia MacArthur joins us now in studio with more on the circumstances surrounding an EPO. Georgia. Imani Marvin, experts say there is often a misconception with emergency protective orders known as EPOs being just a piece of paper, but studies show they are effective and do provide protection to most victims. There's the emergency protective order that is a temporary order, and then you have to go back into court for a hearing for a judge to hear both parties. And that is your more permanent order. That's called the domestic violence order. Delana Henderson was shot to death in Lexington last week, just days after court documents showed she tried to get emergency protection from her husband. So there's a couple of things. You always want to have a safety plan in place when you get a protective order. You can't just, that's not a safety plan. It's a tool um, to let the offender know like this is this is my line like I'm ready for peace. And Professor TK Logan who works in UK's Department of Behavioral Science has been studying EPOs for decades. Logan talked to women for a year in rural eastern Kentucky in urban central Kentucky to get a response rate on EPOs. About 50% of the orders are not violated. That's all it took to get peace in the women's lives is just this protective order, which we also did a cost benefit analysis and found that it's a low cost intervention. Protective orders are used to shield people from partner violence, but are they a path to justice or just a piece of paper? But when they are violated, then the victim needs to take even more protective steps because we just don't know what's going to happen with that arrest. Will he, then will there, um, how long will that person be in jail? TK Logan says when a victim is ready to take the next step against an abuser, he or she should treat each incident as worst case scenario. And a protective order is a tool. It's one tool in in getting that separation and that and that peace and and the family's lives and to put that offender on notice. TK Logan in Greenhouse 17 in Lexington recommended reaching out to victims advocate centers for help when considering filing any type of emergency protective order. Marvin. Good information. Thank you, Georgia.